This video is brought to you by PremiumBeat.com. You know, one of the things that I still stumble upon is remembering like all the techniques that go into creating an effective, uh, simple logo animation. So in this video, I'm going to break down all of the popular techniques and we're gonna combine all these elements together to create a very simple but awesome logo animation for your videos. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope everyone's doing well today and thank you so much for watching this video. So we have a lot of cool techniques in this video. We're gonna be putting together like a glow effect, a stroke effect, you know, taking a logo and making it seem a little bit more metally with a shine effect on it. So a lot of cool techniques combined together for this tutorial. But before we jump into our tutorial, I'm gonna say thank you to premiumbeat.com for sponsoring this video. Premium Beat is a royalty-free music provider for your creative video and motion graphic projects. They have an incredible music library with thousands of songs to choose from, and Premium Beat has been my go-to in finding soundtracks for the last few years because of how easy it is to find great soundtracks that fit my projects. So for your next video project, be sure to check out premiumbeat.com for your royalty-free music. All right, so here we are in After Effects, and this is gonna be a lot of fun to create. So let's go over to our tutorial composition, and all we have in here is our logo, and I just put in an abstract background. You can use whatever you want for a background, even a black background works great with this technique. So once you have your logo in here, and I do suggest working with an Illustrator logo anytime you're working with logo animations, but a PNG will be okay for this. The first thing you wanna do, once you bring your logo in here, we we'll go to Layer, Pre-Compose, we'll rename this to Logo Placeholder, move all attributes into new composition, click OK. All right, so this way it won't be a destructive workflow. You can change out your logo anytime in the future. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go to Effect Perspective, and we're gonna grab Bevel Alpha, and we'll increase the edge thickness up by a little bit to maybe like five-ish, uh, and we increase the light intensity by a touch this way, this will bevel the logo a little bit, and that looks nice. Then we'll go to Effect Generate, and we're we'll gonna grab CC Light Sweep, and now this will do that traditional, you know, corporate style light sweep across your logo, which is really nice. So I'll put this, you know, at the side of our logo right here, and we'll come here to the beginning of our timeline, and we'll add a keyframe for center. All right, and we'll move forward, say five seconds to the end of the animation, and we'll move this to the other side of the logo. So now you'll have this nice sweeping reveal of the logo. Now, it's kind of weak, so one thing you can always do is you can always change direction if you want, you know, completely do that, it's totally fine, but one thing we'll do is increase the width and also the sweep intensity. This will make it a little bit more uh, bright, and we come here to edge intensity, you can increase that by a little bit or bring it down, and edge thickness is cool, and also bring down the sweep intensity by a little bit. Okay, so there is that, and one thing we can also do is we can also bring in another one as well, we can do another... CC light sweep, and this time we'll do is completely the opposite direction. So you can see this one's horizontal, and we start this at the top if you want, go back to the center, and we'll add a keyframe for that at the beginning of our timeline. Move forward to the end of our animation, and we'll bring this one down. And we can just do a quick, you know, adjustment here, maybe increase the sweep intensity, intensity by a little bit, and also the width. This way, now we'll have a little bit of extra variation here on our logo, and that's pretty awesome. Now, if you want to get more of this metallic-ish metal reflective gloss look, whatever you want to call it, uh, all you're going to have to do is go to Effect Generate Gradient Ramp, and we'll put this layer on top of everything, or this effect on top of everything. Now, that will stand out like that nice and punched out. Looks awesome, and you can change the color if you want. You know, you get some really cool looks if you change the color, um, but we'll keep it right here for now. So now what we're going to want to do is take our logo placeholder, and we're going to edit Duplicate, and we'll rename this layer to Vegas. And don't lose all your money, guys. It's okay. We'll go ahead and delete everything we've done. And thank you for watching this tutorial on the undo button. No, that was a terrible joke. All right, so what we're going to want to do here is go to Effect, Generate, and we're going to grab Vegas. And, all right, and now we'll put everything on red or yellow right here. Okay, so what we're going to do here is come here to Segments and put this down to 1. All right, so you get this line going right here. All right, so the first thing we'll do underneath the rendering category, set this to transparent. So now we'll just be over the original object. And one thing you'll notice is that this effect might not be taking up your entire logo. So there's two fixes to this, and this depends on what type of logo you have. So we'll go back into our logo placeholder, and you see that we have an Illustrator file, and this is the best file to have. But what we can do here is right-click this, 
go up to create and click on create shapes from vector layer and go back into our main composition everything is fixed however if you don't have an illustrator logo and you have a regular png what you're gonna have to do is go to uh layer and click on auto trace and just copy my settings there click ok and then you'll just have this version of your logo and and it should work just fine but I'll, i'd rather stick with the actual vector layer outline this way it's a little bit more precise and easier to work with all right so then we'll come here to rotation and we're going to all click stopwatch and type in time asterisk 200 or maybe 300 depends on how fast you want this to be and i'm going to turn off our logo placeholder so we can see the vegas effect a little bit better and we'll get this animation like this so one thing we can do is come here to midpoint opacity and lower it to like you know 0.5 ish this way it won't be so much in your face and we'll set our width to like 4.5 awesome and i want to lower down the midpoint position by a little bit this way will kind of kind of make it a little bit more soft in a way from here we can change the color to any color we want i'm just going to do white and don't worry we'll change the color in a little bit but first we gotta get this effect set up and one thing we can also do is towards the end here we can add a keyframe for width move forward by like a second and bring the width down to zero which will be 0.5 this way we'll kind of fade away the effect um and it'll be a little bit easier to control now we gotta add a few effects to this so first thing we're gonna do is go to effect stylize and we're gonna add glow all right, and then we're gonna duplicate this glow effect. We'll increase the glow radius to like 50 to 60, and we just bring down the glow threshold by a touch. All right, awesome. Then again, we will duplicate it, and now we're getting some really interesting looks right here, and we'll increase the glow radius to like 115, or you know, 120-ish, you know, around that range, and that's cool. And then if we want, we can also go to effect, uh, blur and sharpen and grab a CC radial fast blur, and I'll bring this nice and low. I don't like this so much for this. And then set this to brightest. So this way, it'll just be like a very subtle effect. Nothing too crazy. Okay. So now to add some extra color into this, all we have to do is take this layer and duplicate it. Okay. Then we'll go back to our Vegas effect and we'll change the color to any color that we want. I want to do like an orange color. I really think that's a good look. All right. Then all we have to do is set our blend mode to screen. Okay. Then we'll duplicate it again. And this time we'll set our color to another color. I'll just do red. And now we get this nice, you know, orangey, beautiful glow going on here. And it's really awesome. Now this is a cool creative opportunity to hit P on your keyboard for position for any of these layers and just kind of offset it by a little bit. You don't have to do this, but this will just kind of create a nice subtle, in a way, RGB splitting effect. Um, I don't necessarily suggest you do it. It's only up to you if you want to take a look at it. Um, but you can see it just kind of breaks things apart uh, and makes it seem a little bit more on the glitchier uh, abstract end of this effect. So I'll leave that up to you if you want to do that. It's a cool idea. Just take a look at it. All right. So from here, we'll turn our logo placeholder back on. So one thing we'll do is come here to begin for our timeline for our logo placeholder. Hit T on your keyboard for opacity and we'll add a keyframe for this and we'll move that keyframe forward by a second or so and we'll set the opacity down to zero percent then we'll just offset this layer in time to like the three second mark and then let's grab our vegas layers and hit p on keyboard for opacity and let's add a keyframe for opacity at the beginning of our logo placeholder and then a little bit past it we'll just set this down to zero percent this way we'll have it fade away and then we'll just hit u on our keyboard to bring up every keyframe in this composition and let's select everything that we've done and let's just make it easy ease keyframes by hitting f9 on on our keyboard and one thing I'll actually do is I'll take all of our Vegas keyframes and I'm just going to move them over a little bit more. This way, the Vegas effect will be more or less on top of our logo a little bit longer. So that's just completely up to you. But essentially, this is how this effect is done. And of course, you can always add like little extra third party elements like lens flares or any subtle dust elements that you can use. Now, one place of inspiration I would take a look at, and also if you're looking for your own logo animation, is from one of my favorite logo animation authors on Video Hive, which is Grand Design. I hope I said that correctly. He has some of the best simple logo animations on Video Hive. And of course, if you're on Time Crunch and looking for a very specific style, you can pick up a template right here off of Video Hive, which will help you save a tremendous amount of time. So if you are in that Time Crunch and looking for something very custom, 
check our links in the description. It'll, it'll take you right over to some of these awesome logo animations. So this video has showcased how to put together a lot of popular techniques to put together a really cool logo animation. I hope you found it helpful. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.